What's up, guys? Welcome to a trade breakdown video. Finally, a trade has happened. We've been anticipating one of the top players to be moved, and Anthony Manta is the first one of the top 10 or top 15 players on the 2024 NHL trade bait list to be moved uh, during trade deadline week. So he goes to the Vegas Golden Knights for a second round pick and a fourth round pick. And just to uh, specify what years, it's a 2024 second round pick and a 2026 fourth round pick. So Anthony Manta, since being traded from Detroit to Washington, really had a hard time adjusting, dealt with a lot of injuries as well. And this year, he was on fire. He really picked it up. He scored 20 goals and had 14 assists for a total of 34 points in 56 games uh, this season with the Washington Capitals. Uh, former first round pick, um, 20th overall by the Detroit Red Wings in 2013, currently 29 years old. Um, honestly, uh, you know, this trade works for me uh, because you know Mark Stone is going to be out for the remainder of the season so they had enough salary cap to make this work um as you can see here uh they had about 2. Uh, 2 sorry 7.2 million dollars in cap space because they put um Mark Stone on LTIR uh, and that's why this trade was able to to happen and in terms of his contract, he's being paid $5.7 million for the remainder of the season where he'll be a UFA. He's able to play uh, the left wing position and the right wing position. And in terms of his, you know, his spot on the Washington Capitals, he was playing third line minutes with uh, Protas and Michael, uh, Mick Michael on the third line. And he saw some power play time on the first power play unit, obviously with Alexander the Great, Ovi, uh, John Carlson, Dylan Strom, and Tom Wilson. So a pretty effective power play line. And uh, now he's, he finds himself on a playoff team, one of the favorites this year, um, heading into the 2024 playoffs. Um, we'd like to hear your uh, thoughts on this, um, on this deal. Yeah, so... I like this deal, I think, for Vegas. I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for them, like you said, obviously with Mark Stone being out and obviously Jack Eichel, you know, on the brink of returning uh, very soon. Um, but this is one of those moves that I think is is a low cost. Uh, it could be a low risk, high reward for them. I know a second round pick is, is a significant asset, you know, a fourth round pick in 2026 as well. You know, you're giving up two potential, let's say, magic beans in this case. And, you know, a second round pick could turn into – to something pretty decent for Washington if they draft well, or they can flip it in another, in another deal. Uh, same thing with the fourth round pick. But this is a team that, you know, were kind of on the edge of the playoff line. They've struggled as, as of late Washington. It doesn't look like they were going to, you know, fall into that playoff race with how well Detroit and Tampa are doing and with the Islanders, you know, playing well as of late as well a little bit. And New Jersey fired their coach the other day. They're battling for the playoff spot. I think Washington accepted their fate and decided, you know what, I think it's better off to sell. It looks like it's a seller's market. And a second and a fourth is not bad. I mean, you're looking at a guy who's 29 years old, right? So he's in the prime of his career. You know, he's in a contract year. And this is a guy who is capable of scoring 20 goals. You know, we've seen it happen. He did it this year. And he's done it two previous seasons with Detroit. But his time in Washington before this season wasn't the best. He kind of struggled. You know, he dealt with a lot of injuries. It wasn't always the best case scenario for Anthony Manta, who I think is a very good player. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, maybe hasn't always gotten the points, but I think has always been a really decent, you know, top nine player in the league in the sense where I think you can put him anywhere in your lineup and I think you can get value out of a player like that. I think in Vegas, he's going to be relied upon to score. I think, you know, he adds an element to their team that, I think they're lacking. If you look at their team, you know, obviously it's a little bit weak after the top six. I mean, Michael Amadio being in their top six without, um, you know, without Mark Stone being there, I do think it adds some depth to them. And even when Mark Stone, if he does come back for the playoffs, well, it just gives you a better problem to have. So I think for Vegas, I like this move. You know, they get Manta for pretty much half the season and then they can decide afterwards if they want to resign him or not um, in the off season. But Either way, you're getting a guy who's scoring 20 goals. I think you can throw him on the power play as well, get him some opportunities on the PK. I know he's played a little bit on the PK as well 
uh, in Washington. So he's a kind of a player that can do a little bit of all of it, uh, to be honest. And not only that, you know, like I said, for Washington, you know, they get two assets here that they can add to their cut board. Maybe if they want to go make another move, they'll be able to. But they free up Manta's uh, $5.7 million cap space, which from the looks of it doesn't look like there's any retention on it. There so, is retention, 50%. So he'll be paid a $2.85 oh, so it million. Is, it is 50% officially, right? Yeah. Okay, it so is. there you go. So even at that, $2.5 million, I mean, look, you retain for half the season. It's not really a big deal. Um, I think for the Capitals, it's it's a smart move. I think, you know, I, I saw a lot of people on Twitter just scrolling through a little bit that, you know, they're not too keen on this deal. I think Vegas does. I think both teams do well. I don't think Manta was getting a first-round pick just because – in hindsight, I think that for a player like Manta to get a first-round pick, he needs to prove a little bit more. And, yes, he scored 20 goals, but his injury history and the fact that he struggled last year, I think a lot of teams were like, oh, I don't know about a first-round pick. But a second and a fourth makes sense. It's it's two significant assets for Vegas. Um, I have nothing really more to say other than that. I think, I think, like I said, I like this move for Vegas. And for Washington, I mean, they've accepted their fate. Like I said, maybe it allows them to call up some guys from Hershey. It makes sense why they claim Matthew Phillips, uh, why they uh, put uh, claim Matthew Phillips off waivers again uh, this afternoon. So you know, there's I think I think it's a good move. And Washington, you know, the first domino falls ahead of trade deadline, and we're hoping to see more uh, come soon. So. Yeah, and not only that, you know, just uh, taking a look at their injuries, you know, they have quite a few injuries here. Nothing too significant, uh, apart from uh, Howden and uh, and Stone. Uh, maybe you could even put William Carey there as well. But you know, because of Stone's uh, long term injury, this is why this deal was made. They take advantage of the uh, of their cap space, and not only that, because it's fifty percent retention in terms of his salary. Um, they could add another player, you know, um, maybe they could go back and uh, make another trade to Washington and trade back for uh, Max Pacioretty. You know, Max Pacioretty uh, is available for Washington Capitals. You have Nick Dowd, who's another name. Uh, you have Nick Jensen, who's another player. So they have quite a few players on the market. Uh, Charlie Lindgren, a goaltender as well. So it seems that if they're parting ways with Mantha, they're not going to be afraid to part ways with other players. Yes, Mantha was a guy that we're trying to move for a while now because he wasn't a fit with the Washington Capitals. And sometimes, you know, patience pays off. And and in this case, it does. Uh, you know, they wait. And like Luca was saying, I don't think you get a first round pick because of how inconsistent he was a uh, majority of the time with the Washington Capitals. But because he was able to bounce back this season, they actually were able to get uh, a pretty hefty return uh, in terms of, um, you know, Anthony Manta. But like the your thoughts in the comment section below, guys, in terms of this deal, who won the Washington Capitals or the Vegas Golden Knights? Or was it a win-win uh, trade for both sides? And what other trades do you see Washington making in terms of being sellers uh, this 2024 trade deadline? And what else can Vegas do in terms of adding possibly another forward with uh, all this cap space that they have uh, left over? So make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I would like to hear from both fan bases. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Youngest Podcast. Thank you so much, guys, for watching.